All right, so we're gonna be working on this carrier condensing unit with a Carlisle compressor, seven and a half ton. It's low ambient condition, so what we gotta do first is get some prep stuff done. I'm gonna take this tank, which I've got some R22 in because it's, the system is R22, and we're gonna heat this tank up. This is a yellow jacket tank heater, and I'll show you guys how to use that. We're gonna heat this tank up while we're working on the machine, and because we're only working on the compressor side, which is gonna be isolated, I don't have to pull a vacuum on the entire system. So we're gonna get our battery-powered NAVAC pump all charged up and ready to go for when we're ready to pull a vacuum. Tank heater is on. We've got it, we've got it plugged in here. All right, now, we want to wrap this around the bottom of the tank because that's where the liquid's sitting. We want to get that liquid warm. We want to create some vapor in there and we want to pressurize that tank. So I like to put it at the bottom here. So we're going to let this sit while we work. And then by the time we're done and we're ready, we're going to have enough pressure in there, enough pressure differential between this and the system to get this refrigerant in, no problem. So this is what we're replacing today. This is a, a common term you might hear for this is a fusible plug. Now what this is, is a fitting that is filled with solder. Now if that solder melts, basically it blows the charge. So this thing sits on top of the compressor. If the compressor gets uh, pressurized, like overly pressurized, it gets too hot, the solder can heat up, it can melt, and it blows the charge, basically acting like a relief valve. Now, Carrier's calling it a snubber assembly. I'm not really sure why that is. But upstairs, the compressor is isolated from the entire system. So chances are that compressor is out of refrigerant, okay, because we have to wait actually for about three weeks for this. So that compressor is probably out of refrigerant. It's probably just going to be a quick swap evacuation charge, all right? So let's get out onto the roof and see what we got to do here. So there is a suction service valve completely front seated. The discharge service valve one is too. I've still got the cap on it right now, but it's the same way. Now. When you totally front seat the valve like that, you're isolating the compressor from the rest of the system. So right now, this, this port here would be open to the compressor, not the piping, the way we have our stem. Now, it's odd because there's a Schrader core in there. You don't usually find a Schrader core when you have these types of valves, these stems. They're usually just completely open, but it's kind of what I thought. We don't have any refrigerant in there because when I push the core down there's zero pressure so we can safely take this off and replace it there's the existing one and you can see the blob of solder on the top and it's leaking right there so we have a bit of a an issue here between that one and the new one so here's the new one one noticeable thing here off the bat is that the solder's on the bottom of this one and the solder's on the top of that one which is, uh, which is a bit different. Now, this one's also got a T on it for the low pressure switch. This one doesn't, so we're gonna have to get creative here and find a new place for that low pressure switch to sit. We're just gonna coat the threads here with some nylog just to keep that seal nice and tight. And the other thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep this plastic cap on, okay, because that way we know if that solder ever melts and blows, guess what? This plastic cap will go with it. So we'll know if there's ever a problem with this thing, okay? This, there's, there's nothing holding this on. You can pull this off with your fingers very easily. So it's not like it's going to keep the charge in and make this fail, okay? It'll blow off very easily. So for now, what we've done with this low pressure switch is we have added a swivel T right here and added the switch here. So now we can check pressure there. But here's the thing, here's the thing you gotta keep in mind, is that when we put this valve back to its regular position, so we backseat this valve, we're gonna have to crack the valve in order to have flow from the pipe through here at the low pressure switch at all times. It's not the most ideal situation, but in a pinch we've had to do this before. Um, it just sucks that this didn't come with a T, so for now that's the way it's gonna be. What I'll probably do is I'll just hang a tag around here saying to keep this valve cracked, all right? Just so the next person that comes along knows this until we can figure out why that didn't have a T and maybe get the correct one because to fix this is not a big deal. We just pump it down, um, swap it out real quick, pull a quick vacuum and, and away we go, right? So for now, we're gonna incorporate the low pressure switch this way. Okay, so we're ready to pull a vacuum on this compressor. So I've got the battery operated pump here. I've got 
some 3 8 hoses connected up. I've got the cores pulled out. Remember we had cores in behind those. I've pulled them out. Okay. Um, so we have no restriction to flow there with the core removal tools. And we have our vacuum gauge right here. So one thing you have to keep in mind, because this compressor is isolated from the system and there's refrigerant in the lines, what can happen here is, because in my experience, these valves, these service valves don't hold 100%. What can happen here is when we're pulling a vacuum, we're actually gonna pull refrigerant from the system through the compressor and out. So there's a good chance we're not gonna reach 500 microns because we have refrigerant infiltrating past these valves. Now, what you, you can usually smell it, okay? You can usually smell it coming out of the pump. That's a good indication that you're pulling refrigerant, you've gotten rid of the air, and the refrigerant is now purging its way through the system. Now, the other option is to remove all of the gas, but that is a lot more time consuming and a lot more expensive for, for the customer. So you have to find a way sometimes to, to isolate and do it this way. So we're gonna pull a vacuum, we're gonna monitor our we're gonna monitor our, our microns with the, the micron gauge, right? We're through the Testo app. And we'll see how we do. And if we start smelling refrigerant and we're not getting down to that 500, that tells me we're, we're moving refrigerant through the system. It's not that we have a leak in the system. It's just that we're moving refrigerant through those valves because they don't 100% hold, never, in my experience. So let's get this vacuum So pulled. we've pulled the vacuum on this. We've opened up the valves or we backseated the valves to open the compressor up to the rest of the system. And I've also ran some wiring over to here. I'm going to tidy that up a bit more in a second, okay, with some more zip ties. But we've ran some wiring over, so our low pressure switch is now back in the circuit. Now, as I was saying, when you have an isolated compressor with refrigerant in the system, it's hard to get down to 500 microns. It's really not gonna happen. So when I was pulling the vacuum, we got down to about 3,000-ish microns. I could smell refrigerant coming out of the pump. So what was happening is we removed the air, obviously, and then we started to purge refrigerant through the entire compressor and out. Okay, so when you start doing that, now you're dumping refrigerant into the atmosphere. You kind of got to stop it. At that point, you've purged all the air out. And refrigerant is, is good at grabbing moisture as well and, and getting it out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start this up. We're going to hook up the gauges. We're going to bring the refrigerant tank out and start this machine. So we've got our clamps on, measuring our superheat and subcooling. Our sight glass is flashing a bit, but our TX valve is wide open right now because the space is warm. The space is warm and that's why we're getting quite a bit of superheat. Our subcooling is getting there. Our pressures seem okay for now for some R22. Uh, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more gas to this and let it run for a bit and see how All it right, goes. All right, so I've added a couple of more pounds of refrigerant and we are starting to run nicely here. We're starting to sort of equalize out and get a bit better. So I'm gonna monitor this for a bit. If I have to add a couple more pounds, then so be it but we're looking like we're running half decent at the moment. So that's it guys, happy HVACing.